Hi guys, thanks for joining me. I'm Marilyn. I recently bought a 5-in-1 heat press. So with that comes the regular platen, two plate presses, one mug press, and a hat press. Now I hadn't used any of the attachments until Cricut came out with its cute little mug press. That got me excited to try some coffee cups. So I went to Michael's, bought a box of two, and in the background here you see the results. I used sublimation for my design, but you could also use Cricut's infusible ink. I made the first cup, figured out what I needed to change, and then I made a recording of the second cup. So if you're interested in learning how to make cups with your 5-in-1 heat press and Cricut Design Space, keep watching the video. I'm in Cricut Design Space, and this is a template that represents my mug. Now, with print and cut, you can only do 9.25 inches wide. So that's what this image is right here. My cup, however, is 10 and a half inches in diameter. And so I have that split into two halves. I have five and a quarter here, five and a quarter here. Now let me show you how I'm going to use this. Here's my two images. I'm going to put one on the front of the cup and one on the back. Now I'm gonna move this into one of the rectangles that represents half of my cup. And let me go up and say send that to the front. So it is selected. I can hold the command button down, select the rectangle, then I can go up to a line and say center it vertically and horizontally. Then the other half of my mug is going to have this image. So again, I'll drag it over the left rectangle, click arrange and say send to front. It is selected, so I'll hold the command button down, click my rectangle. Once again, I'll go to align and center vertically and horizontally. Now with sublimation, you need to mirror your images. And I'm going to go ahead and mirror them now. So I've selected the coffee. I'll say flip horizontal. Then I'll select my other image, flip horizontal. I have this selected already, so I'll hold the command button down, add the green circle to it, and I'll click Attach. Now what I've done is I've centered each of my two designs on the front half and the back half of the coffee mug. Now I can go ahead and bring it down to my print and cut template. I'll select everything, and then I'll say Align and center vertically and horizontally. Okay, so for now I'm done with these two up here, so I'll just go ahead and hide those. So that Cricut doesn't try to cut around the outside of each circle, I need to go ahead and flatten this. So I'll go ahead and do that here. Now I'm ready to send it to print. So I'll click on Make It. Typically you would mirror it, but I already did. The reason I didn't mirror it here is, if I mirrored it here, then what I wanted on the front would be on the back, and what I wanted on the back would be on the front. So I mirrored them individually in the design. I'm going to say Continue. Then I need to say Send to Printer. It's already set up to go to my sublimation printer. Now I want to take the bleed off, and then I do want to use my system dialog for printing it. So I'll click on that. Then I'll go ahead and say print. Now, sometimes it shows up back behind there. I can see it's peeking out over here. But it does warn you, after clicking print, your print dialog may appear behind your design space application. And in my case, it did. So let me move this over a little bit so I can click on my print dialog. OK, I like to use best for the quality, and then I'm going to go ahead and say print. I'm going to be printing on my Epson EcoTank 2760. I bought this recently at Costco. It was $249. And to use it for sublimation printing, instead of putting in the ink that came with it, I put in some Cosmos ink. So you flip this little lid up, and then you can pull up this paper guide. I'll be using Koala brand sublimation paper, and they make it really easy to know which side to print on. 
there's a blank side, and then the back side has their logo on it. So you just place this back here between the paper guides, and it falls down into place. On the front side, there's this little tray you can pull out. Now, I always get this notification. It says, paper type does not match your settings. Confirm current setting. I'll go ahead and click OK. And then it's on continue printing. And once again, I have to click OK. When you print with sublimation ink, your image looks pretty dull, but that will really change once we add heat to it. With print and cut images, you place them up in the left upper corner. And then I want to rub this down to the mat, make sure it's adhered well, but I don't really want to rub over where the ink is. Now my machine is prompting me to pick a paper type, so I'll go pick copy paper, more pressure, and I'll be right back. Now that I've selected the paper type, the Cricut is prompting me to load my mat. With print and cut, the Cricut will use some sensors to determine where it needs to cut. This is a little bit of a lengthy process, but once it's done, it'll start the cut automatically. So my image is done. I can just pull it off, and that's what it looks like. Now with sublimation, you always use blowout paper, and all that is is paper that catches any excess ink. So I would be wrapping a piece of just general copy paper around this, so I've also made a template for that. I'll go ahead and cut that, and then I'll talk more about it in the rest of the video. Okay, so I have my two templates, and let me show you how this works. Print and cut is limited to 9.25 inches, but I wanted my template to be closer to almost 10 and a half inches. So, my blowout paper has some little cutouts, and I know to put my design just inside of those. Okay, so I've lined that up pretty well. I'm going to use some heat resistant tape and just tape those together. Now, the reason I did this is you're going to use blowout paper anyway, and I wanted to get further around my cup to make sure I have my design in the right place. I'm going to place my paper flat on my table surface and then just pull it around my cup. That way, I can see if my design is fairly centered. So right now I saw I needed to move that a little bit, and that looks fairly centered. So let me go ahead and put some heat resistant tape on one side. Okay, I know I have that in the right place. Now I get a little more tape, and then I really want to press this down all the way around. and then I'll add more heat resistant tape. Okay, I feel fairly confident that's in the right place. So now, I'm just going to add more tape to hold everything in place. Okay, that feels really good. So we'll go ahead and move to the heat press and keep working on the project. Now what I need to do, and I should have done this already, is unscrew this lock, pull out the plug for the regular platen. Now here's my cup press.
Then you just screw this collar back down to hold it into place. Okay, so I have my mug here. It has the sublimation paper and the blowout paper on it. Okay, I need to open this up. I'll put my mug in. Now, I want to try to keep that handle fairly centered. And then this part is hot, so I'm going to use this glove to hold it in place. Okay, the handle isn't really very hot. I know this cup is very hot. So if you have any kids in the house or even a cat that could jump up on a table, be very careful that you don't leave this unattended. Okay, I have my little wood block. I'm going to go ahead and move this back over to the table and we'll check it out in about five minutes. All right, it's been about five minutes. Now, again, the handle is really very cool to the touch, but the cup is not. So let me go ahead and put my gloves on and we'll try to unwrap this. Now, you want to be careful that you don't scratch the coating on the mug, but I'll just get under this tape so I can lift it off. Okay, I think it's the moment of truth. Let's see how this looks. Cute, very cute. Let me get this closer to the camera so you can see it. Very, very nice. I love the quality of this mug. And the 501 heat press worked beautifully. Thanks so much for joining me. Until my next video. Bye-bye.